On the third Sunday of Lent, we heard the gospel simply known as Jesus and the Samaritan woman. It describes ultimately a twofold thirst. It should be a thirst for God, but we know, much like that woman, we thirst in life for peace and happiness, comfort, good health, and a long life. And to satisfy that thirst, we pursue material success, wealth, pleasure, or recreation. The woman of the gospel has several strikes against her. She was a half Jew of mixed race, belonging to a people despised by the faithful Jewish people of Israel. And she had five husbands, and the man she was with wasn't really her husband. Clearly, she was no stranger to pain in her life. At the time of Christ, men could dismiss their wives very easily. She thus had been dismissed by her previous husbands, and no doubt she had a feeling of rejection and daily was exposed to judgments of others, which must have intensified her humiliation. She must have been very familiar with loneliness, sadness, and isolation, and probably religion wasn't her strong suit. In ways perhaps not as dramatic, we bring to God our own struggles to find a happy life, our searching in the wrong places, our mistakes, our failures, our falls. But the Lord sees all of our weaknesses, and much the way Jesus with the Samaritan woman, he offers us the opportunity to be refreshed, but only if we turn to him and we realize that that thirst can only be met by God. But all too often we forget that God thirsts for us. We need to move beyond our desires to appreciate the enormity of God's thirst for us. On Tuesdays each week, I celebrate the 7 a.m. Mass at the Convent of the Missionaries of Charity here in Spokane, St. Patrick's Convent. And in every one of the sisters' chapels near the crucifix are the words, I thirst. Mother Teresa asked her sisters to reflect upon those words. Spoken first, we know, at Calvary, they continue to echo God's thirst for us and his love for us. Mother Teresa told her sisters, until you know deep inside that Jesus thirsts for you, you can't begin to know who he wants to be for you or who he wants you to be for him. As Sarans, I know you pray in many ways for vocations to the priesthood and consecrated life. It is your unique vocation. You also pray for perseverance for those who are already ordained priests and serve in consecrated religious life. But as you pray for your families and the needs of our church universal, the church in the United States, our world, our nation, and your local communities, I ask that during this Lenten season that you remember to pray for yourselves, to look deeply at to the source of those thirsts and know that in our own lives, the only peace we will ever experience is to come from God himself. I've asked you to, uh, and suggested to you, the possibility of reading a book by Kevin Wells, The Priest We Need. I'm gonna give you another one of Kevin Wells' books entitled Priest and Beggar. It is the story of a remarkable priest, Aloysius Schwartz, who is venerable. His remarkable achievements serving God humbly, seeing that the thirst for God could be best met as he reached out for those most vulnerable. It's a remarkable life. It is one, again, that is striking in its generosity and in its, his deep faith. I'll speak more about this book as well as Kevin's other book. And I encourage you as part of your Lenten reading, in addition to scripture, and to perhaps more deeply enter into the lives of the saints, you might reflect on the needs of the present church and see that there are many men and women who have a thirst for God, and that thirst was met as they found God in others by serving generously. God bless you, and let us keep each other in prayer in this Lenten season.